zoning approval for that footprint that exists right now that would have to be superseded to get perhaps into the, you know, past the, the two million mark that you're talking about. Okay. Ms. Um Unfortunately, I have to say that I, I believe all these, a lot of these comments are all stall tactics. It seems to be a pattern that's been developing and um, it's, you, you just keep stalling everything. Everything we want to do seems to get stalled and pushed off. And there is no reason to not list this at this point. And basically, I would like to see this um, come to a vote right now. I, call for the I agree. Okay. So I would say you call the question. I have, I have a question. It has nothing to do with that. I've had my hand up. I'm sorry, Mr. Francis. Okay. Please. Yes. It will continue. Uh, Mr. Esposito. Just, I'd like it for the record, and I mentioned this the last time, on vision appraisal, which is where we establish all values and assessments, we have the 50 East Street School Valuation 215 Appraisal. This is their number on vision appraisal at $2,623,100. I want that stated clearly in the minutes. This is what is on vision appraisal. And what you're, are you saying that that's I, the, the true value, the market value of property? This is what we have been carrying on the grand list, and that vision appraisal has established as the appraised value, which is normally a little bit less. You've looked at enough of these. It's usually a little bit less than what the true value is. Mm -hmm. So, have we checked Zillow too? Zillow is not. Zillow is just a no. uh, it is a an aggregator of values. It does not do anything to the tax assessors. This is established via the tax assessor. Uh, facetious, Mr. Okay. Esposito. Okay. Um, anybody else come? Mr. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to um, reply to Councilwoman Lundgren's call that thinking that some of us are doing this as a stall tactic. Um, I take issue with that because my job that I do, I deal with appraisals all day long. And you can get different values. You can talk to your appraisers. You can find out what they're doing. And you can put in different comparables to get a different answer. So I take umbrage with that. All I'm trying to do is you have, you have the taxpayer and the public at large that is going to be asking us these questions when we make this decision. Prime example, you have Councilman Esposito popping up the, the, the uh, tax assessor's role. And we're going to be answered questions. So I just want to make sure when we're doing this, we've been very thorough. We've talked to this, to the, to the appraiser, and we found out why he came up with the valuation that he did, which is why I was asking our economic development director. He's not an appraiser, wasn't licensed by it, and I appreciate him giving me the answers, but there's some that he can't do. It's only the appraiser that can do it. And that's fair enough. I get right. that, Mr. Best, but... You know, he did write a 78-page report explaining why he came up with the values that he did you know, and the best use and the density and the comparisons based on that. And, and I get it. This is not an exact science. It, it is an art. What we're looking for here is an appraised value that is reasonable at the end of the day, not high in the sky. I'm 